We have seen in the previous video that deep learning models can be reduced to a data classification problem. Classification is used for two main purposes. To make sense of the current trends in data, such as newly built houses sold within a year, but also to predict future trends based on the previous knowledge we have. For example, new built houses that are likely to be sold within the upcoming year. We have seen that data can be separated into different classes using linear and nonlinear borders. Before we start diving into classification and deep learning, however, we will introduce important nomenclature that we will be using throughout this series. To start with, the borders separating the different classes of data are labeled the decision boundary. This name is quite intuitive, as a boundary of such nature will allow us to make decisions on how to label the different classes present in our data, such as cat versus dog versus bird, house sold versus house not sold, car versus truck, skin tag versus tumor, and so on. In dealing with classification problems, we usually construct data tables as the following, with all the relevant informations about the problem we are dealing with. In such data tables, x1 to xn represent the input data and are known as the features. The last column is labeled as y and is usually known as the outcome, the target, or simply the label. The Y label is a piece of information that stems from the analysis of the data from the features. As we have seen in the housing market example, the features can be information such as the price and location of the house, while the Y label can represent the status of the house being sold or not. The Y label is determined by humans based on previous knowledge, experience, and intuition and is regarded as the holy source of truth when dealing with classification problems. Then, there is the y-hat column, known as the prediction or the hypothesis. y-hat is obtained as a solution to solving the classification problem related to the dataset we are dealing with. Solving the classification problem should result in a sequence of y-hats that are a total match for the y-labels. For the y-hat to match the label y, we must have a certain gauge to what makes a good prediction. There is no definitive answer to this question, as the outcome depends on the problem we are trying to solve. However, in broad terms, a conventional metric in classification problems shows that predictions are considered an overall good hypothesis when y label and y hat have an overall match of the order of 80 to 98%. We can then say that we are able to predict the outcome or the y label with high accuracy. On the other hand, predictions with overall accuracy lower than 75% are usually seen as bad and consequently, improvements need to be made, somehow, to increase the overall accuracy of the prediction. The decision boundary dimensions, labeled D, is equal to n-1, where n is the number of input features. This means that if we have two inputs, such as the example of the housing market from the previous video, then the decision boundary must be a one-dimensional object, for example a straight line or a curve of some shape. Three input features would result in a two-dimensional decision boundary. Ten input features will result in a nine-dimensional decision boundary, and so on. Let us have a reminder of what classification is all about. Classification is the procedure that separates data into different classes. 
This separation of data into classes will allow us to make appropriate predictions about the outcomes of different classes in similar datasets. In other terms, we need to construct a highly accurate mathematical formula for the decision boundary that makes the best separation possible between the different classes in the dataset. Once the formula for the decision boundary is found, we can apply some sort of an operation, in mathematical terms, a function. This function will give us the y-hat predictions for the data labels. The shapes and forms of these sort of functions will be discussed in great details in the upcoming videos. In order to find the formula for the decision boundary, we will present two mathematical approaches. The first approach is called regression analysis. The second approach is known as deep learning and is the central core of this series. We will show how deep learning presents a far superior approach to regression analysis. This superiority is conspicuous when dealing with real-world classification problems that have high nonlinear decision boundaries and big numbers of features. So stay tuned for the next videos.